that doesn't mean heaven is our home. That's not what it means. It means we are estranged from God. We are alienated from God. We are not very obedient to God. Our sin separates us from God. We are exiles here on the earth. We are not waiting to go home somewhere in heaven. That is not the point. Because those of us who have come to know Jesus, those of us who have come to have a relationship with Jesus, the Father and the Son and the Spirit have made a home in them. And so they are at home with God. And so here we have these young men. Okay, by the time we come to chapter 3, I don't know how young they are. Um, we don't know how young or old they are. But we have these men in Babylon. We have these men in Babylon. God called Moses. He sent him to Egypt to bring the children of Israel from Egypt, from slavery. He set on them in the land. After many years, he gave them kings. But the people disobeyed God. They did not walk in the ways of God. And God sent his prophets to go and speak to the people. The prophets spoke to the kings. The prophets called the people of God back to God. But the people could not listen. And the kings could not listen. And so eventually God was so angry with the people. He could not contain them anymore. He could not um, exercise his mercy anymore. And so he allowed his enemies, the enemies of God's people, to come and take them away. And that's how we find Daniel, Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Babylon. They are there because God ultimately has decided to punish Israel. That's why they are there. But even while they are there, they are expecting to live as God's people in Babylon. They are exiles. But God expects them to live as God's people even in Babylon. And that's the reality of our lives. God expects us to live our lives here in exile as God's people. Following his command. Following his word. That's what God expects. Jesus has come. And through Calvary, through the cross, through that cross, Jesus brings us back home to God. But the earth is not transformed into heaven. Jesus brings us back home to the family of God. But it is a family of God that still lives in exile. Because the world has not yet been transformed to become the place where God ultimately lives, ultimately dwells. Where, is, where the world becomes, becomes his temple and he dwells there with, together with his people. That awaits for a future date. That awaits for a future date. And so here in Daniel, we have an example. Here in Daniel, we have a pattern. Here in Daniel, we have wisdom. We have knowledge. We have skills. Here in Daniel, we find wisdom to survive during the days of our soldier, sojourning here in the earth. We find wisdom. We find confidence. We find courage. We find a pattern. We find men who exist before Jesus. Yet they carry the pattern of Jesus with them. As we have gone through chapter 1, we have looked at the four men. How they arrive in Babylon and how, how Babylon tries to transform them to become Babylonians. Babylonian education, Babylonian names, Babylonian jobs, but they refuse Babylonian food. We went to chapter 2, and in chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar has a big dream. He has a dream, a dream that troubles him. He has this dream whereby he sees an image, an image of gold, an image of silver, an image of bronze. And ultimately, ultimately at the feet, an image that bears clay and iron. He is troubled. 
Nebuchadnezzar is the king of kings at that point. He is the king of kings. He is the one who rules the world. He is a superpower. He has seen this dream. He is troubled. He, find, he wants to know the meaning. What is the meaning? He gathers all the magicians, all the sorcerers. He, he gathers all the astrologers to come and tell him the meaning of the dream. They come over. They cannot tell him the meaning of the dream. And so the life of Daniel, Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego is threatened because they are part of the group that should give Nebuchadnezzar the, the interpretation of the dream. Daniel calls his brothers and then go into prayer asking God for help. Then go into prayer asking God to reveal the dream and the meaning of the dream. And ultimately, eventually, God reveals the dream to the three, to the four brothers. And Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel is brought before Nebuchadnezzar and he tells Nebuchadnezzar the dream. And that's where we finished last, last week. Nebuchadnezzar is told the dream. The image that, that he saw in the dream is about the four kingdoms that will succeed. It's about him and the three kingdoms that come after him. It's about the end of Nebuchadnezzar. And the rise of the three kingdoms that will come after the, after the kingdom of Babylon. The golden head represents King Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom of Babylon. The silver waist represents the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians that came 538 after the fall of Babylon. Darius and Cyrus. The image that as 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 a mixture of clay and iron represents represents the, represents the Romans before, but before the Romans were the Greeks, the bronze. They came and they went. And after the Greeks, the Romans, they came and they went. And it is during the days of the Romans, 64 BC, First AD, during the days of Jesus Christ and Paul and Peter and the early church. It is during those days, the days of the Romans, when verse 2, chapter 2, verse 24, comes to fulfillment. When the God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. No, any other kingdom shall be left to another people. Nor, that, nor, that, nor shall that kingdom be left to another people. And this kingdom shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end. It shall stand forever. It's a powerful, powerful word of what the kingdom of Jesus Christ has been doing for the last 2,000 years and is doing even now. The God of heaven through Jesus Christ has set up a kingdom unlike the kingdom of the Romans, unlike the kingdom of the Greeks, unlike the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians, unlike the kingdom of the Babylonians. He has set up a kingdom that has been in existence for 2,000 years now. Nebuchadnezzar came and left. He died. He was destroyed. Darius and Cyrus and all the Caesars, Caesar Augustine, Caesar Tiberius, all these Caesars, Caesar Claudius, all these Caesars came and they went. And even the kingdoms that have risen after that, the Roman kingdom, the British kingdom, maybe the American, talking about the American, the Asian kingdoms, the African kingdoms that have come and that have come somewhere along the history, they have come and they have gone. But in the days of the Roman kingdom, God of heaven, it says there, the God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. That's the word of God. The kingdom that we serve, the kingdom that we have become members, cannot be destroyed. Cannot be destroyed. 
That kingdom shall not be left to another people. The kingdom of Jesus is the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom that will exist forever and ever. God is the king through his son. It shall not be left to another people. And that kingdom to date continues to break in pieces all these other kingdoms and brings them to an end, but it stands forever. That kingdom, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, continues to break every small and great kingdom, including your own small kingdoms. Because we have a tendency to want to establish our small kingdoms. Political, social, religious. We have a tendency to want to establish our own dynasties. Our own small kingdoms, big and great, through money, through politics, through economies, through, through all these, through families. We try to establish kingdoms. But this is the promise. This is the promise. There is one kingdom that breaks every other kingdom. You may seem to succeed. The kingdoms of the world, whether they be political, whether they be economic, whether they be religious or social, they may seem to exist and to live forever. They may seem to do that. But let me tell you, eventually, eventually, those kingdoms, Jesus will bring them down because there is one kingdom that will stand and that kingdom is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar's dream has him as the king of kings. He is the head of gold. He is the head of gold. He is the head of gold that he saw in the dream. You are king, verse 37. You are king. Chapter 2. You O king, the king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, and the might, and the glory, and into whose hands he has given, has given wherever they dwell, the children of man, the beasts of the field, and the bounds of the heavens, making you rule, over, rule them all, you are the head of the gold. You are the head of gold. You are the hand of gold. That's what Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar. That's the interpretation. That's the interpretation. And so, what Nebuchadnezzar will do now is to amass all his powers so that he may, he may show forth his glory, his power, his strength, his political kingdom. That's what he's going to do. He is the hand of gold. So he will try by whatever means to establish that golden kingdom that Daniel has spoken about. He goes into the offensive to establish a kingdom that, that is golden. A kingdom that will save all the nations that have come under him. Because in the ancient world, kings are gods. And they also have a salvation to proclaim. A peace to proclaim. They are saviors. Kings in the ancient worlds are saviors. They save. They bear peace. They carry peace. They bring pay. They bring peace to a province. One province after another. When the king is visiting the, a province, it is like the son of God visiting a province. That's what kings are in the ancient world. And so in chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar will play around with this golden thing, with this golden end. He will, play, he will play around with this interpretation of Daniel. He erects a golden image, exactly what Daniel has told him. He erects a golden image in the desert. In the desert. He demands all under his dominion, and it's everyone at that point, all under his dominion, he demands all under his dominion to bow and worship his gods and the image. That's what he demands. Everyone under his dominion to bow and worship his image. Let me take you back to the end of chapter 2. Let's go back, go back to the end of chapter 2 and look at Nebuchadnezzar again 
Verse 46. The king named Gadnesar fell upon his face, paid homage to Daniel, and commanded that an offering and incense be offered up to him. The king answered and said to Daniel, Truly, your God is the God of gods, your Lord is the Lord of kings, and a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king gave Daniel high honors, many great gifts, made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel made a request of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel remained at the king's court. Some surprise there. That the same king named Gadnesar who through the interpretation of the dream by Daniel has come to pay homage to Daniel and even to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords and the god of Daniel is now ready we don't know how many years later it is most likely many years after that he is now ready to elect an image put it in the desert and call all the peoples under his dominion to worship that image. It's interesting. It's interesting. So that shouldn't help us question the conversion of Nebuchadnezzar. We shouldn't question that. And that tells us, tells us something even about our conversion. So Nebuchadnezzar caused people to worship this image in the desert. Cause people to worship this image in the desert. And then there is a punishment for those who do not worship the image. A punishment for those who do not worship the image. It's a threat. It's a threat. And you know, you may feel so far away from these stories. You may feel so far away from these stories. Yes, that's what is happening. That's what happens in our lives. Everyday life. It's what, it's, what, it's what happens. It may not be the president calling you to worship his image or to worship him. It could just be the society. What the society requires of you. There are so many images that cross our path, that cross our mind and our eyes every day. Images after images after images. Physical, online, factual. All these images that we see Every day. And they are calling us to bow our knees and to worship and to obey them and to do what the society requires us to do and to follow them. Every day. That is, that is our everyday life. So that you don't think Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego lived in a totally different world from the world that we live in. We live in the same world. We are the same exiles like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And every day, every day, there is an image that has been erected for you either to worship or to behave like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's punishment for those who do not worship the image. Maybe in your case, punishment is that you will lose that job. Maybe in your case, punishment is that you lose that girlfriend, you lose that boyfriend, you lose that marriage. Maybe in your case, punishment is you lose that career. You lose money. I know what, it mean, what this means for you. You, you, you. I know you know what this means for you. But now, among these peoples, you can see there, the nations. The peoples, the nations that are under Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 4, the errant proclaimed aloud, you are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages. You are commanded. What are you commanded? You are commanded when you hear the sound of the horn, the sound of the pipe, the sound of the lyre, the sound of the trigon, the sound, the sound of the harp, the sound of the bagpipe, and every kind of music. Of course, this music is coming from where? It's coming from all the peoples and all the nations. 
and all the languages. Everybody is playing their music. When you hear the sound, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the burning fiery furnace. That is the threat right there. That's the threat there. And so, everybody did it. Everybody did it. Except three guys. This time around, Daniel is not present. We don't know where he is. Maybe this happened much later. We don't know. We cannot work that out from the historical, from the history here. But we don't know where Daniel is. He is not even mentioned in the whole chapter. But Daniel was the key person in chapter 2. The key persons in chapter 3 is Meshach, Shandrach, and Abednego. They are in the provinces. They are not in the capital city. They are not in Susa. They are in the provinces. What are they doing in the provinces? They are serving the kingdom. But they are serving the kingdom without worshipping Nebuchadnezzar and his gods and his images. They are busy. They got state jobs. They are busy working in the provinces. They got the education. The Babylonian education. They got jobs. So they are busy out there in the provinces. What are they doing? Serving the kingdom without worshipping the king. And these three, these three, who are in charge of the provinces, they are accused maliciously. I, when I saw that word, I stopped there for a while. I even went to the Hebrew to look at the word because that word, that word is not a nice word. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, if you have never been accused maliciously, then you, you may never know what, what, what I feel when I see that word. Those of us who have maliciously been accused know when they read that word, you get, you just, you stop there for a moment and you stay there to, to look at what is happening there. They were, they are accused. Some people come maliciously and accuse the, the three boys, the three young men to the king. They maliciously craft a plan. We don't even, we are not even told whether they came to the desert or not. We are not told. You know those Sunday school images whereby you have a million people bowing to the image? I don't know whether you saw those things. And then the, everybody, a million people bowing and then only three hands in the middle. You remember that? I think that's a stupid image. Yeah, We don't know where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are. We are not even told whether they came to the desert or not. What we are told is, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. Accused the Jews. They declared to king, to king Nebuchadnezzar, Oh, king, live forever. You only worship. You only worship. Okay? And then you, O oh king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, by the way, Muliona I reputation. Ulikona get tired, eh? Udona see your same to music. That's modern people. We are like that. These things are repeated like three of all times. Okay? The horn, the pipe, the lyre, trigon, harbuck, pipe, every kind of shall fall down and worship the golden, and whoever does not fall and worship shall be cast into the burning fire. There are certain Jews, the people now, this is now the Malis. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O oh king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or even worship the golden image that you have set up. Looks like Ovis Moshene. Look at it. Just look at that. <laughs> Moshenea of his, he. Either the PA to the CEO. And I knock him lango and I get the CEO. And I'm being nini? Moshenea. And I'm being, you know, that girl. And that boy. And that man there. Looks like, looks like it. You, you look at the first statement there. That's how Moshenea starts. There are certain people in these offices. 
<laughs> there are certain people in our company. That's how Mojene starts. Yeah. Who think they are special? Who think they bear God more than we do? Who think they are Christians than us? Yeah. They cannot bribe. So when we are told to do this or that, when the company requires, we go out for a party, they are hesitant. There are certain people. Iyo ni language ya moshene. Si ukuja tu useme penina na Augusta na Naomi. Wamekata. Kwa nini unasema certain people? Certain people. Mkubwa. Kiongozi. Kiongozi. Kuna watu hapa kwa hii kambuni. Moshene. And that's what malice is. That's what malice is. And so these guys are accused maliciously. What is the accused? What is what is the what are they being accused of? They pay no attention to you. Is that true? These guys have been serving in the provinces. They were appointed by the same Nebuchadnezzar. They have been serving in the provinces. They have been serving the state well. But now these guys come and say they pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods. Now that is true. They do not worship the golden image that you have set up. Certain people. Can you touch your neighbor and ask them whether they are, they are part, they are, they are some of those people. There are certain people. When we are cooking the math at the end of the month, at the end of the month, they don't want to be part of what we are doing. There are certain people. Ask your neighbor, are you one of them? There are certain people when the company organizes end of the year party and then evening, the evening comes. They don't want to dance at the floor and drink. There are certain people in our company. Ask your neighbor, are you one of them? Because the truth is, there should be certain people. That is the truth. Yeah. There should be certain people. So the question is, are you one of them? Are you one of them? When they are being counted, will you be on the list? Or you will be on the list of all those, of those who dance throughout the night? And do they pee on them? Are we together? Certain people. Someone here, Leo, ni title ni nini? Someone here, Leo, title ni nini? Certain people. Certain people. <laughs> certain people. There are certain people. That is that is the memory of us. That is the memory of us. Wachana na ile ya Lions Den, ko chapter 6. Hapa kuna memory of us. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon and their names are mentioned there. The names are mentioned there. We know them. We know where they do, where they work. We know where they live. They are part of our companies. They are part of our institutions. We know them. We know their behaviors. We have watched them. They do not do things like we do them. Certain people. You say me certain people. Yeah. And ask your neighbor again. Where, where? Niwewe ni mumonja wao. Wewe ni mumonja wao. Mumonja wao. Certain people. Yeah. This man, oh king, pay attention. Pay no attention to you. That's a lie. That is a lie. They do not serve your gods. That is true. They do not worship the golden image that you have set up. That is true. Are you one of them? Are you one of them? Certain people. There are certain people here. When we, when we are cooking the pan DMs end of the month, they don't want to be part of that. They don't want to be part of that. There are certain people here. 
when we are coming up with ways and methods by which to rob the company, a few shillings, they do not want to be part of that. Certain? Certain? Certain people. Certain people. They do not pay attention to the king. Neither do they serve his gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. It is important to note that these three did not deliberately look for trouble. They didn't. They probably stayed away in the provinces. Because I'm not sure everybody went to the desert. I'm not sure. You must make note of where the Bible uses hyperboles to explain and to emphasize. Sometimes when the Bible says, and all the people gathered, be careful. Be careful how you preach about that, how you interpret that. Because the Bible and the language in, in the ancient days, the Bible and the language of those days, they use, they use metaphors and they use hyperboles all the time in their writing. So I'm not sure everybody went into the desert. Maybe the three boys stayed away because they did not want trouble. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom to survive in Babylon. Maybe there are times you need to stay away. Can you look to your neighbor again? Ah, leo muna nisa India. Leo muna nisa India kumbiri. Maybe there are times you need to stay away. Can you tell them? Maybe, maybe. Maybe there are times you need to stay away from the parties. <laughs> wisdom. Wisdom for marketplace. Wisdom for surviving in Babylon. Maybe there are times to stay away and you don't go with the people. Wisdom to survive in Babylon. They are not looking for trouble deliberately. They were not looking for martyrdom deliberately. They are not looking for the day when Nebuchadnezzar will get so angry and he will kill all the Jews. No, they are not fighting for that. They are not looking for trouble. They are servants of the king, but they worship the God of the Jews. They worship Yahweh. They worship Yahweh. They are serving the empire without worshiping the empire. It is also important to note that the temptation is quite clear. The temptation is quite clear. It's just there at their face, the temptation. What is the temptation? We can do this thing and get away with it. What's the matter? Ah, it's just one day in the desert and we, are, we go back to the provinces and continue worshiping our God. So the temptation is right there. It's so just a matter. It is just a matter of a single bow. Like this. Mm. And then you lift your hand. Kwani, what's the problem? It is as simple as, as that. They can argue. They can argue that way. They can argue that way. A simple bow, and then you go back to the worship of God, Yahweh. So probably the king has argued with them. You know, they, they are known by the king. And the king is telling them, really? Really? Why make a big fuss of this? You know, those are the questions you are asked by your colleagues and your juniors and seniors. Why are you making a big fuss of this? That's a marketplace. That's Babylon. That's Nebuchadnezzar. That's the, those are the gods in our world, in the marketplace. Why make a big fuss of this? Why don't why be so narrow-minded? Hey! Kwanza sasa hapo ndiyo shinda. Hapo ndiyo shinda. How our Christo. How our Christo. They are so narrow-minded. Ukisikia hivyo, unasikia uko insultant. Unasikia uko discriminated. You want to be part of the group. So you join the group. You join the group. Because maybe you are talking to one of the colleagues there and you are telling me, I, me, I think, me, I think every time we do these things, they do not end up very well. With me. And so this time around, I am thinking I will not be part of it. And then your colleague tells you what? Nasi unagwanga narrow-minded. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Na hii kuwa pasta. Kuna mtu alisema hivyo jani. Na hii kuwa pasta. Kwa ni nini? Ni nilasima? Na wewe. Kwa ni kanisa yenu? 
Are those, are, do those things sound familiar? Eh, na wewe kwa nini kanisa yenu inakuanga namna gani? Na wewe kwa nini unafikiria anga wewe ni special kutuliko? Si sisi tutaenda. Are you saying sisi si wa Kristo? Are you saying that? Huko hapo tu nachanganyikiwa kidogo for two days. For two days unaenda morning devotion, unaenda lunch hour, unaenda evening service. Eh, ukitafuta kisolu solution. Why be so narrow-minded? Maybe that's what Nebuchadnezzar is asking them. In fact, it is your fellow Jew who came up with the idea of a golden image. Sasa sikia rationalization. Inaita kwa nini? Rationalization. Muna enjoy your word. Sasa sikia rationalization hapa. Nebuchadnezzar probably is telling them, maybe, okay, not maybe, look, it is your friend, Daniel. He is in fact who interpreted the dream who gave me the idea of the golden image in the desert. So what is the matter? Ni nyinyi mlikunja na idea. Hii idea ni yenu. Sasa nini kinawasumbua? Nini kinawasumbua? Bow. It's just a single bow. It's just a single tot. Mnazitanga hivyo. Just one. One. One just one. The stupid bottle. Just one. For the road. Just one. For the road. Chuk. Yeah. It's just one night. No, hakuna mambo mingi. Just one. One what? One night. Just one night. It is just this time only. Not tomorrow. Just this time. No, 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 no. You will go back to your pastor. You will go back to your church. You will go back to your music. It is just only this one time. Si munaona gons za Nebuchadnezzar ni ngonzi tu zetu. Kwani ngonzi uchange? Hebu asikio nimba. Kwani ngonzi uchange? No, don't they don't change. What changes is culture. What changes is what? Culture. Gods do not change. They are the same ones. They are the same ones. Only this one time. Do it. Get yourself safe. Go back to the provinces and continue serving. But do it. Do it. Your salary will be secure. Do it. Your jobs, your career will be secure back in the provinces. Just do this. That's a voice of our society. That's a voice of our God, of the gods that surround us. Just do it this one time. But these three boys, they did not give in and they were not ready and they were and they were ready to face the consequences of their choice. They were not going to give up. They knew God. They loved the law of Moses. They loved the word of God. They loved Yahweh. They loved the covenant that God had made with their fathers. They were not going to give in. And they were ready for the consequences. Is that you? Turn your, turn your neighbor. Please do. Please help me preach today. Is that you? Please do. Please everybody. Is that you? Is that you? Yeah. They loved God. They loved Yahweh. They loved the law of Moses. They loved the covenant that they had signed with the fathers and signed with God. They loved the word of the prophets. They loved Yahweh even in exile. They were not ready to give in. They not ready to give in. We are not ready to give in. <laughs> I like this. And so they opened their mouths and they told the king. Verse 16. They talked to the king. Look at how they speak to the king. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. We have no need to answer you in this matter. Why do you feel you must answer your friend? Your colleague at work. Why, why do you feel you must look for an answer? Why? <laughs> why? Why do you feel you must explain? Why? Because your worship is not yet defined. You are still living a mixed life. That's your problem. That is your problem. We do not have to answer you when it comes to this matter. If this be so, ha. Sasa ndadawa Kristo wa inai wapi? 
tu atatoka wapi If this be so our God whom we serve he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand O king How do you tell your employer that Allah This is their employer okay you don't believe go back to chapter 2 the last verse Chapter 2 the last verse Daniel made a request of the king of the king and he, the king appointed Shadrach Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon but Daniel remained at the king's court who is the employer the king let's go back to 16 316 Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, "Oh, Nemkanesa, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve, we do not serve you, admittedly, admittedly, admittedly you are not the object of our service. The God that we serve is able to deliver us from the fire and he will deliver us out of your hand. O oh, king, I want you to think about those words. What faith? Okay, I'll come back to that. Then but if not, can you tell your neighbor if not? So that means if God will not. <laughs> okay? If God will not. Listen, listen. If you are a true Christian, you have you must bear the two signs, the two signs of that one coin. A true Christian must bear that coin. It has two signs. On the one side God is able to deliver you. On the other side God may never deliver you. You must bear that coin. Wachana na prosperity gospel ambayo inasema everything in your way. Hiyo ni shetani. Hiyo ni demon ni 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 doctrines za shetani. Wachana na hiyo doctrine. If if not let it be known to you O king that we will not serve your gods or worship a golden image that you have set up we will not we will not we will not ha huh? when do we have such exiles today in kenya and in the world we are living in where are we going to get such girls and such boys and such managers and such secretaries and such such christians who will speak like this They may not necessarily use the same words but this is con their conviction and this is their loyalty and this is their faith where are we going to get such people in our society where is the church that speaks like this where is it where is it and they are cool we are not being told walikuwa wana shake they are just cool they are cool i mean you cannot you cannot be shaking and say these things these words You can't. <laughs> they are cool, they are set on, they are relaxed. They are relaxed. They are confident. They are confident. You can see their faith in Yahweh. You can see their faith in Yahweh. What they were saying is that we serve God not because he heals us, not because he saves us, not because he forgives us, not because he blesses us, not because he gives us a job, not because he gives us a car. We serve him because he is God. He is Yahweh and there is none other like him. That's the reason why we worship and serve him. That's what they are saying. That's what they are saying. Ask your name why do you serve him? Why? Because he healed you? Because he gave you some 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 fees some money some house some job why do you serve him it's a question you must answer and that's what that's what that's what they are saying and that's why even the book of hebrews commends them for their faith can we jump quickly to hebrews 11 the book of hebrews the author of hebrews commends these guys because of their faith because of your faith what shall we say and what more shall i say fast 32 what more shall i say for time will will for time would fail me to tell of gideon and barak and samson and jephtha of david and samuel and the prophets fast 33 who through faith conquered kingdoms look at that enforced justice obtained 
promises through faith. The one there is through faith. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouths of lions. Wait for Daniel chapter 6. It's exactly that. Verse 34. They quenched the power of fire. Who is that? Who is that? Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They quenched fire through faith escaped the edge of the swamp were made strong out of weaknesses. The author of Hebrews when he is writing a chapter on men of faith in the Old Testament Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego appears in the list. Why? Because of what? They stood against. He calls that faith. He calls that faith. And we will laugh shouting about faith. Oh, I have faith in Jesus. I will be healed. Oh, I have faith. I will get that job. Oh, I have faith. I will finish school. Oh, I have faith. I will be healed. Oh, I, I have faith. But when you face these kind of things, when your employer faces you and makes demands on you, demands that you worship idols and worship the idols of our modern day age, you bow so very quickly and then come back on Sunday and you are lifting up your hands and you are saying, I have faith faith I will be healed. You are a mix. That's what you are. You are a mix and your life is confused. You are a confused man. You are a confused woman. Because out there in Babylon, out there in the marketplace, you sing another song. In here, when we come together, you sing a different song. You are a mix. You are confused. You are a mixture. You are confused. Your identity is not yet crafted. You need to go back and ask yourself, who am I? Am I a child of God? Am I, am I a child of God? Am I a man or woman of faith? Do I trust Jesus? Am I following the pattern of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? You need to ask that question. Ask that question. So a few moments later, Nebuchadnezzar throws the three men into the fire because they have refused to worship him, to worship the gods and his image. He throws them into the fire. A few minutes later, he threw three men, but he sees four men. He threw three men, but he is now seeing Four men. And the fourth one, it says there, looks like the son. Like a son of men. Of man, of gods, of the gods. The fourth one. Let's go back to Daniel. He throws them into the fire. Throws them into the fire. He ordered, verse 20, he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fire. And they were, and they were bound in their cloaks. Again, reputation. In their cloaks, in their tunics, in their hats, their garments. And they were thrown into the fire because the king's order was urgent. And the fire was eaten seven times. But verse 24 says, Then the kingdom of Ganesha was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared, his, he declared to his counselors, counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men unbowed walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the, fourth, of the fourth is like a son of the gods. It was, if I was to go back to, to my PhD studies and study the Old Testament, I would hang you the fourth. This fourth man is Daniel. But that for a sign, that is for another day. <laughs> Where is Daniel? I know 
I know, I know you know the traditional interpretation. It's okay. It's okay. I have done a problem. I don't have a problem. I know it is Jesus. By the way, I tell your name by the preacher knows it is Jesus. Tell your name by that. Tell your name by the preacher knows it is Jesus. <laughs> but it could also be Daniel. He has come for fellowship. The last time we saw them praying together, kneeling down and praying and laboring in prayer and asking God for the interpretation of the dream. It could be that it is him who has come, transfigured, and has come for fellowship in the fire with his brothers. Why not? Why not? That is a very plausible argument. The fourth man looks like the son of man. And we can imagine the confusion that is in Nebuchadnezzar's mind. Nebuchadnezzar goes into confusion. He was, a few moments ago, he was the king of kings. He was the ruthless king. He was the one who was saying, throw them into the fire. Hit the fire seven times. And he throws the three men into the fire. A few moments ago. A few moments afterwards, he, afterwards, he is confused. He doesn't know how to behave. He is calling his counselors. He is asking them, what is happening here? We threw three men into the fire. But I can see four men and one looks like, a, like the son of gods. He is furious. He was furious a few moments ago. But now, he is a confused man. We can imagine the kind of emotions that have run in his life, in his body, in his mind in the last few moments. When he was so angry. Look at verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled, we was filled with fury. And the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So furious, angry, bitter. He wants to destroy this. Three Jews. And look at verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose up in haste. He declared his, to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. And through the, the stand of these three boys, these three men, through their possession, through their declaration, we are going to see Nebuchadnezzar make the next, the second declaration about who to be worshipped in Babylon. Just because three men stood, stood their ground with Jesus, with God. Three men, they stood. And the king will now bow again to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Evangelism, mingine gani unataka? Gani, gani? Unajua tunapenda evangelism ya crusade because it's very easy. Kwa crusade hakuna mtu anakusumbua. Ni yeah, 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 unasumbua town. Unasumbua town. Yeah, yeah, kuja kwa Yesu, kwenda huku. Mapepo kwenda. Ina kujeni kwa Yesu, kwa Yesu ni kuzuri. Alafu unamaliza unapack vizu zako unaenda nyumbani. Acha na hiyo ni shortcut. Acha na hiyo na shortcut. E, ukimaliza crusade kesho amukia mbosi yako kazini. Umuambie, boss, boss, <laughs> boss, we will not serve you. <laughs> After crusade, Jana, Jana, Jana crusade, yeah, yeah, kuja ni muona yesu ni mwema. Kina stella, sidiyo? Kuja ni muona yesu, kuja ni muona yesu ni mwema. Alafu, alafu Sam, ana ingia. Mande ya subui. Mande? Ambia na imba na mande ya subui. Mande ya subui. Mande ya subui. <laughs> Iyo ndiyo wakofu ya kwe ni Leymond. Chana na ingine ya kelele. Wakofu ya kwe? Mande ni? Mande? Asubui. Mande ya subui. Boss! 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 We will not serve you. We serve Jesus and him alone. Iyo sasa ndiyo wakofu. Chana na hiya Sunday afternoon in the market. Furious. Hungry. Emotional. But now astonished. Amazed. 
He doesn't know what to do. Confused. Because of what is happening. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the fiery furnace. He declared. He declared. The same one who said, put them in. The same one he's saying, get them out. Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God. Not servants of the gods. Servants of the most high God. His name is Yahweh. Come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Amenego came out of the fire. Then Daniel went back to his office. Kenya number two. And the satraps and the prefects and governors and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their hand was still, was not sinked. Their clocks were not harmed. And no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel. So there's an interpretation there. Who has sent his angel. But in the Old Testament, angels are also men. Who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather Rather than serve and worship any God except their own God. Blessed be that God. And therefore I make and declare any people, nation, language that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins for there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Ask your neighbor, why do you want a promotion? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Ask them, how do you want your promotion to come? How? Please get an answer. How? How? Through prayer? Through prayer? Through prayer? Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for promotion. 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 Shush, shush, please. Hey. Promotion. Ask again, how do you want your promotion to come? You still want a promotion and you cannot stand your secretary. Leave alone your CEO. Your sec the secretary. You can't stand them. But you want a promotion in the company. You want to get some good job when you get out of college. Yet you cannot stand your lecturer. Ambaye ni sumbua. Na nakwambia ukikata utapata zero utapata d d minor you cannot stand that yet you are really trusting god una hapa unatupita hapa shaka pata kopokote i declare my job after i finish school i declare my job my job cometh job my job cometh lecturer lecturer ambaye hata ana suti mbili anaingia katu na katrauza kama Anakutisha kabisa. Anakutisha kabisa. Unakumbali mambo yake. Alafu unakunja hapa. My job cometh. I declare two years from now. I declare and declare and claim and confess. Wacha unjinga. Wacha unjinga. Kwanza aenda undeal na lecturer. Ambia rafiki yako hivyo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Ambia, ambia rafiki yako. Mindukia mwingine hapo hivi. Hata huyu akona lecturer. Ambia kwanza aenda undeal na lecturer. Na undeal na secretary.
tuweze kundeal na promotion. Amen.